I thought I'd show you a pretty novel use of the potato prompt for data analysis on ChatGPT. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you the potato prompt, which is a kind of a fun prompt that I use uh, when I'm doing demos of ChatGPT. It kind of co overcomes the problem that uh, ChatGPT can sometimes give you slightly waffly answers. So a classic case is this. I'm going to ask a question here of uh, what is the best U2 song? Okay, and it's going to give you a kind of a wordy answer. The best U2 song is subjective, varies widely, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is an, an annoyance of ChatGPT where it kind of gives you waffle, okay? And this, I use this in a lot of demos. It's a guy called Dominic Sipovic and Mateus Fernandez. They came up with this prompt called the potato prompt, okay? This is it. So I'm going to show you it in action here now. And... I'm going to put it in here. So basically what it says is starting now, you're very succinct. You don't apologize if you can't explain stuff. You don't use additional information. You use straightforward language. You say the absolute minimum to get to the point. If you understand, say, got it, I am potato. And look, it said, got it, I am potato. So now I'm going to ask it the same question. And here we go. Subjective, commonly one or with or without you. It's kind of reduced the number to two. That's okay. So I'm going to tell it unpotato to get it back out into normal mode. Thank you very much. Okay, so where I think this is really helpful, and the reason I'm showing you this today is if I open a new chat, if I go into GPT-4, Advanced Data Analytics, I, when I started using Advanced Data Analytics, loved the fact that it was very um, consultative, it told me what it was doing, and so on and so forth, okay? However, now that I'm using data analytics pretty much every day, more and more often, I just want it to do its job and I don't really want it to talk to me that much, okay? So I'm going to give you an example of the potato prompt in action on a piece of data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to upload the, uh, the piece here, which is, it's a PDF I came across on, um, uh, it's large language stimuli and whether ChatGPT and other LLM models actually have emotions and if they respond to emotions. Quite an interesting read. Okay, so this is a piece of research on emotions. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Let's proceed by examining the contents of the uploaded PDF to understand. It's telling me everything. I'll start by opening the file. I'll give you a summary of the contents. Okay, fine, ChatGPT. The document is called Large Language, Large Language Models Understanding Can Be Enhanced by Emotion Stimuli. So, ba -ba 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 -bum. okay, for example, they observed an 8% relative performance improvement in instruction induction. What is instruction induction? So it's going through all this stuff, okay? Complete analysis, I can examine it further. Okay, yes, please do. I like to have good manners with my GPT. You never know, they might rise up in the future and they'll remember who was nice to them. <laughs> I'm not saying that as a joke. Uh, the complete document is extensive, 99,000 characters. Given the length, it'll be impractical to analyze the entire text in one go. Hey, ChatGPT, I thought you'd given us larger context windows. Hmm. Maybe not in Ireland. Anyway, please let me know which part of the document you'd like to know more about. Okay, so as you can see, it kind of takes a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I am going to look up um, a little bit more on a motion prompt. Um, tell me more. And you see, when I put that in, it just kept on going, provide information on why uh, do we need to search locations. Please hold on for a moment. Okay, so it's doing its thing. So as you can see, I'm getting a little bit frustrated by the consultative approach in this case. So appears there was an issue with the rejects pattern of the document structure as the result returned not as expected. Okay, just give me the answer. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to put the potato prompt in, okay? And I'm going to stop it working. I'm going to pop in my potato prompt. Starting now, you're very succinct. Got it. I am potato. Okay. Now I'm going to say, tell me about, uh, what am I looking for? The emotion prompt. The emotion prompt. What do I need to know? Okay. Tell me about the emotion prompt. It should give me a kind of a succinct answer. It's working. 
fighting itself. I want to be long winded. I want to tell her loads. But no, it's going to give me a short, succinct answer. Emotion prompt improves performance at generative tasks by 10.9% on average. It combines prompts with emotional stimuli. Ta -da! There is an example of a fun potato prompt being applied to data analysis. If you want to analyze data and get your answers out quickly and you don't want all this consultative process, you can use the potato prompt. I'm going to put the potato prompt into the bottom part of this post and I've just turned it to unpotato, so I've turned it off. Hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.